I'm not kidding when I say I use Notion every single day. What we're seeing right now is my Notion dashboard. And specifically, one of my favorite apps of all time, and that is Notion. Notion is basically my second brain. Every day, more and more people are using Notion. This all-in-one workspace for projects, documents, and well, almost anything you can think of. It's an excellent task management tool that can significantly enhance your productivity. But do you know what you can combine it with that will supercharge your productivity even more? more? Hi Digmates, I'm Dominique and today we're going to dive deep into how you can level up your efficiency and productivity with Notion and a programmable keyboard. Notion provides many templates for almost anything you need. This can save you a lot of time as it'll be much easier to customize a template than to make one from scratch. Notion is also fully equipped with keyboard shortcuts, markdown, and slash commands so you can do most things without ever touching your mouse. However, some of those shortcuts and commands require require you to press multiple keys or type long strings of text. For example, you can press Command Option 4 or Control Shift 4 on Windows to create a to-do checkbox, but that requires quite some hand contortion. You can also type slash to do to get the same result, but that's also cumbersome. What if you could perform each and all those shortcuts and commands into single keys on your keyboard? It would be like an awesome custom Notion macro pad. All you need is a Digma Raze, or any programmable keyboard actually, but a Digma Raze would be better. If you take a look at the list of Notion's shortcuts, you'll see the most used modifiers are Command, Option, and Shift on Mac, and Control and Shift on Windows. But modifiers are a pain in the ass to use, especially if you need to press two of them and another key at the same time. So let's move them to somewhere more comfortable. Fortunately, the Digma Raze has eight thumb keys which are extremely easy to access with your thumbs. So the first thing we should do is put your command, option, and shift, or control, shift, and alt for windows on your thumb keys, along with space, enter, backspace, and delete. This is actually more of a general rule for any app and not only for Notion. Try to position the modifiers you use the most in the thumb keys that feel more comfortable to you. You can even have a key that combines two of those modifiers like control and shift, which is used a lot on Notion for Windows. You might have noticed that I mentioned more than eight functions and we only have eight thumb keys. Well, for those of you who are new to the channel, that's where dual function keys come in handy. You can have things like space or enter when you tap a key and a modifier when you hold it. So something like this would be a good starting point. But this just covers the basics. Time for the fun part, making this keyboard a huge macro pad for Notion. If you pay close attention, you'll see that beside the modifiers, there are two keys on the thumb cluster that say L4 and L5. Those are keys for accessing other layers. In case you're not familiar with layers, Think about how holding shift makes all your keys capitalized or how in some keyboards you can access your function keys by holding the FN key. If you want to learn all about layers, check out this other video. As of now, those two layers are empty, but let's fill them up with useful shortcuts and commands. Being able to move through text, paragraphs, documents, pages, and databases without having to reach for the mouse can be a great time saver. So let's create what I like to call a movement layer to do just that. my nose. Okay, I know what you're thinking. What? To help understand this better, I've colored all arrow commands into warm colors. Red, pink, orange, and yellow. While all other movement commands are in cool colors, different shades of blue. So we have the arrows in the I, J, K, and L keys. Command left and command right to go at the end or beginning of a line. Alt left and alt right to move through words. And then on the left side, we have another set of arrow keys that have the modifiers alt shift up left, down, and right. And this allows you to select words, whether you go up, left, down, or right. Here we have the shift command, left, shift command, right. And this allows you to select the entire line, left or right. Here we have the mouse wheel up and down, mouse wheel left and right, page up, page down, home, and end. And 
And for the last functions here on the right side, we see the command open bracket and the command close bracket. And this is to go back and forward in a page in Notion. And for the last commands, we have control shift K for Mac or control K for Windows to go to the previous database page and then control shift J for Mac or control J for Windows to go to the next database page. Don't worry, we'll be sharing the layers we've created. So make sure you watch this video till the end. This layer isn't only great for Notion, but also for writing emails, long texts or documents. Of course, you can modify this however you want. Maybe you don't use home and end as much and would like to change that to zoom in and zoom out or switching desktops. But the fun doesn't stop there. Are you ready to add more specific commands for creating content? Here we have a list of the content creation shortcuts in Notion for both Windows and Mac. Let's see how it'll look if we put them all in another layer. It's always a good idea to use colors to remember what each key does. Turquoise is for text. Yellow is for heading one, two, and three. The green one is the checklist. Blue for bullet points. Neon pink for numbered lists. Tangerine for toggles. Red for code. And white to create a new page. There are other shortcuts that are frequently used in Notion, especially if you're collaborating with other people, such as creating a comment, which has the shortcut Control Shift M for Windows or Command Shift M for Mac. We can also add the at symbol to tag people in the comments. Another awesome thing about text editing in Notion is that you can color texts or backgrounds. This shortcut requires you to type forward slash, then the color at the beginning or end of any text block. For example, slash blue or slash background. That's a pain to actually type every time you want to change the color of anything. But it's a breeze if you can configure a macro to type it for you. Creating the macro in Basecore is easy. Just type the text you want to add and hit add to timeline. And if you want something more complicated, you can also do it key by key. This is how I've configured them all on the race. I didn't create one for all the colors that Notion offers, just the ones that I use the most. YUIO changes the color of the font and HJKL the color of the background. Notice how I cleverly use the RGB LEDs on the keyboard to light each key in its corresponding color. At this point, you might want to take some time to think about your layers. You wouldn't want to overcrowd them with different macros or shortcuts. Yeah, the macros, shortcuts. To help you avoid that, super keys will come to the rescue. It's super key. A super key can have up to five functions, and more importantly, it can contain macros. A simple example would be creating a super key that changes the color of the font on tap and changes the background color when you hold the key. You can do that for all the colors and free up space on your layers. Notion has many, many more commands that you can add. Some examples are slash callout, slash comment, slash quote, or my favorite slash emoji. Although you can trigger that with the colon and the name of the emoji you want. You can check them all in this link, which is also in the description below. We've given you the basics of how a programmable keyboard can make Notion so much easier and faster to use. But this is just a starting point. Now it's your turn to customize your configuration depending on your workflow. The good thing is that both Notion and the Rays are very versatile, making their relationship symbiotic. If you need any tips or help, feel free to reach out to us on Discord or Reddit. The links are also below. And for those heroes who have watched till the end, you can find the link to the layers we showed in the description. Please do let us know in the comments what other apps you want us to dive into and create layers for. Until then! People are you combine? Yes. I'm so clever. Look at me, I'm so smart.